By changing how you feel and think and witnessing evidence of this change, you start to believe in yourself as the creator of your life rather than a victim. Imagine being in a room with 1,800 people. The atmosphere is charged with music and you're not focused on eating, smelling, or tasting. Instead, your eyes are closed and you're moving around, fully immersed in your feelings. In this moment, something extraordinary happens. You're having an interaction with yourself on a profound level. Now your body, being incredibly objective, believes it's in an entirely new environment. It's like your elevated emotions have the power to pull you out of the past and plant you firmly in the present moment. This experience is not just a mental state, it triggers a biological change in your body. Here's where it gets interesting. People dealing with various health conditions from mild to severe undergo these events some witness miraculous healings like getting out of wheelchairs and walking again. Others may not experience a complete recovery, but not as a significant improvement. The timeline for these transformations varies widely, you know, from several years to just a few months or even weeks. However, there's no one size fits all formula. The more profoundly aroused your, your emotional state, the quicker and more enduring the change seems to be. But there's a catch. We've observed cases where people heal from serious illnesses only to return to their old ways of thinking, feeling, and acting. As a result, the condition resurfaces. Take, for instance, individuals who've overcome terminal cancers. When they stop engaging in those elevated emotions, and revert to their previous mindset, the illness can come back. It's like their body believes it's back in the same challenging environment, reacting in the same way, and unsurprisingly, producing the same results. Parkinson's disease, too, has shown a similar pattern. Someone could experience a significant turnaround only to witness a relapse within an hour if they slip back into their old habits. The fascinating part is we've seen these individuals make another comeback by re-engaging in those elevated emotional states. So the lesson here is not just about the initial healing, it's about sustaining it. The power lies in consistently embodying those elevated emotions steering clear of the old patterns and creating a new reality for yourself. It's like a dance between your emotions, thoughts, and actions, where the music is the elevated state you choose to resonate with. In essence, these healing experiences are not just about the body, they're about a profound shift in how you perceive and respond to life. It's like rewiring your entire system to embrace a new and healthier reality. The journey might be different for everyone, but the core lesson remains. Your emotional state is a powerful force in shaping your well-being. Imagine being in a room filled with people sharing stories of their incredible healings. Some of these stories are like breaking the four-minute mile barrier. They're proof that remarkable transformations are possible. The speakers, often doctors and researchers themselves, stand before the audience with scans and evidence to back up their claims. They're not just talking theory. They're living proof that healing is real. Their stories aren't always easy to hear. Many of them face dark and challenging times as they battled their conditions. But despite the hardships, they showed up for themselves every day. They believed in the possibility of healing, and that belief kept them going, even on the toughest days. What's incredible is that these stories are no longer rare exceptions. They're becoming more and more common, spreading like wildfire through communities, just like how diseases can spread. Now, hope and wellness are contagious too. 
As more people share their stories and experiences, a powerful shift in consciousness occurs. Consciousness, simply put, is awareness. And when people become aware that healing is within their reach, they start making different choices. They stop resigning themselves to illness and start believing in the possibility of change. This shift in mindset sets off a chain reaction, inspiring others to believe in their own healing potential. Now let's talk about the impact of one minute breath work on heart rate variability, HRV and anxiety. First, let's understand HRV. Your brain is wired to constantly monitor and respond to threats in your environment. When you encounter stressors, situations you can't control or predict, your brain activates the fight or flight response, flooding your body with stress hormones. Here's where it gets interesting. Every time you shift your attention from one thing to another, whether it's a person, a problem, or a place, your brain's neural networks go into overdrive. Even just thinking about your problems can trigger the stress response. So how does one minute breath work help? Studies have shown that practicing simple breathing exercises for just a minute can have a profound impact on HRV and anxiety levels. By consciously regulating your breath, you signal to your brain that everything is okay, calming the stress response. Focusing on your breath brings your mind and body back into harmony. Instead of reacting with panic or anxiety, you train your brain to respond calmly and rationally. This shift in mindset not only improves HRV, a marker of overall health, but also reduces anxiety levels. In essence, one minute breath work acts as a powerful tool to reset your stress response system, helping you navigate life's challenges with greater ease and resilience. So the next time you feel overwhelmed or anxious, take a minute to focus on your breath. It may seem simple, but the impact it can have on your well-being is truly remarkable. Picture yourself stuck in traffic. Your heart is racing, trying to pump blood to your extremities. Why? Because your body's primitive system thinks there's danger, maybe a predator. Your heart starts beating irregularly and out of rhythm, causing a kind of chaos in your body. Now, when your brain and heart are incoherent, meaning their signals don't sync up well, it's like waves canceling each other out. Less energy flows in your brain. And when there's less energy in your brain, you default to basic survival instincts, run, fight, or hide. You don't feel like trusting or connecting with others. It's not the time for gratitude. You're in a stress mode. People often say, I had a stressful day, but I'll unwind by watching TV. The catch here is that relying on external things to change your emotional state can make you dependent on them. The good news, you can make your brain and heart more coherent. How? By understanding what stress does to your focus. When you're stressed, your focus narrows down intensely like when you freeze at a mysterious sound in the bushes but this hyper-focus can become obsessive. Stress makes you overthink and overanalyze, actually making your brain and heart function even more chaotically. So what if we teach the brain to broaden its focus? Instead of obsessing over material things or known problems, try opening up and focusing on nothing. This shift causes you to stop overthinking and start sensing and feeling. It slows down your brain waves. Think of it like this. Constantly shifting your attention from one thing to another is like a storm of lightning in the clouds. Chaotic and disorderly. But when you broaden your awareness, those different networks in your brain start syncing up, making it more orderly. Now, imagine resting your attention in your heart. Where you place your attention is where you put your energy. If you regulate your breath and slow it down, even for just a minute, 
you can change your brain waves. Your heart starts functioning with more regulation and order. Commit to working with your body. Breathe intentionally, focus on emotions you wanna feel. It might take a few minutes, but with practice, your heart starts producing a profound signal, an external magnetic field that's measurable. So now you have a coherent brain. You can be intentional, focused, your heart is coherent too, allowing you to feel the emotions of your future before they happen. It's like your body becomes a broadcasting station, sending out signals. And remember, the brain is electrical in nature. In simpler terms, when you're stressed, your body gets all jumbled up. Your heart and brain aren't on the same page, and it's like they're canceling each other out. This mess makes you feel like running or hiding, not really in the mood for trust or connection. People often unwind with TV after a stressful day, but relying on external things to change your mood isn't a great plan. The trick is making your brain and heart work together smoothly. Stress messes with your focus, making you hyper-focused on problems. But what if we teach the brain to broaden its focus, to focus on nothing in particular? This shift helps you stop overthinking and start feeling. Imagine it like this, when you keep jumping from one thing to another, your brain is like a wild lightning storm. But if you open up your awareness, those different parts of your brain start working together. Your brain becomes more organized. Now, if you focus on your heart and slow down your breathing, even for a short time, you can change how your brain works. Your heart starts working more smoothly too. Keep practicing this and your heart starts sending out a strong signal, like a magnetic field you can measure. So now you have a focused brain. You can be intentional about what you do. Your heart is in sync too, letting you feel things about your future before they happen. It's like your body becomes a signal sender and the brain works with electricity. In essence, stress messes up your body's harmony your heart and brain aren't talking to each other properly. It's like they're canceling out each other's signals, making you want to run away. Turning to external things to feel better isn't the best solution. What if we teach your brain and heart to work together better? Stress makes you hyper-focused on problems, but what if you try focusing on nothing in particular? This shift helps you stop overthinking and start feeling. Imagine it like this. When you keep switching your focus, your brain is like a storm of lightning. But if you open up your awareness, those different parts of your brain start working together. Your brain becomes more organized. Now, if you focus on your heart and slow down your breathing, even for a short time, you can change how your brain works. Your heart starts working more smoothly too. Keep practicing this and your heart starts sending out a strong signal, like a magnetic field you can measure. So now you have a focused brain. You can be intentional about what you do. Your heart is in sync too, letting you feel things about your future before they happen. It's like your body becomes a signal sender and the brain works with electricity. Imagine your body as a broadcasting station. Your brain sends out electrical charges while your heart creates a magnetic field, like a magnet drawing things toward you. Now, changing the way you think and feel alters this signal in the field. Keep that positive state going and something magical might happen in your life. But if you stick to negative thoughts and feelings, your life tends to stay the same. We have different practices lasting from one to 30 minutes where we learn to control our thoughts and feelings. The goal is to get so good at it that we can do it with our eyes open. Sounds challenging, right? Well, sometimes life requires us to be super alert and our emergency system that primitive nervous system is handy in those situations. But here's the catch. If you live in this emergency mode for too long, there's no energy left for growth and repair. 
you can embark on long-term projects. Sure, there are times when you need that emergency system, like out running a predator. But the problem arises when you keep that alarm system on all the time. It becomes addictive. I've seen people's brain scans get worse because they constantly analyze their problems within a disturbing emotion. Emotions are records of the past. And if you can't think beyond how you feel, you're stuck in the past with no solutions. It's not as easy as it sounds. We're wired to live in survival mode, programmed over thousands of years. 200 years ago, being human was tough. Constant survival against famine, disease, and more. To make a positive change, you need to let go of the very thing you've relied on your whole life for something greater to occur. It's a battle against centuries of programming and you won't get good at it overnight. It requires practice. So, here's the deal. If you're living in constant stress and survival mode, everything becomes a threat. Your coworkers, your partner, even simple tasks like giving a presentation. That stress system is switched on, making you rush, be impatient, frustrated, and judgmental. It's the emotion you're living by. To break free, you need to cross the river. Get beyond that emotion and see the possibility because you're no longer trapped in the box of that emotional state. It's a choice you have to make. Stick to stress and everything will seem like a danger. Or take a step back, learn to control your thoughts and feelings and see the positive changes that can occur. It's not easy, but it's worth the effort for a healthier, more fulfilling life. Life presents us with a crucial choice. Either we let circumstances dictate our emotions and thoughts, becoming victims of our own story, or we become creators, taking control of our responses and shaping our experiences. When faced with challenging situations, it's essential to recognize the power lies in how we respond. You can either dwell in negativity, blaming external factors for your feelings, or you can embrace the role of a creator in the experiment called life. In moments of difficulty, there's a story attached to those intense emotions. However, it's important to understand that addressing this story should happen from a place of calm and not in the heat of the moment, reacting impulsively, be it through spoken words, actions, or messages, often leads to regret. We must acknowledge when we're in an altered state, influenced by emotions and circumstances, this realization gives us the opportunity to step back and choose our responses wisely. The key is not to let the altered state control us throughout the day. Life's challenges offer a chance to practice a shift in perspective. Instead of being enslaved by emotions, we can learn to relax our hearts, slow down our racing thoughts, and regain control. Taking a few moments to breathe and reset can change the course of our day. The process involves remembering who we truly are and who we aspire to be when we open our eyes each day. It's a continuous experiment where even if we need to repeat the process multiple times in a day, it's considered a day well lived. Practicing mindfulness is not limited to traditional meditation. It extends to daily activities, even with our eyes open. By staying relaxed in our hearts and alert in our minds, we can transform the way we navigate the world. This can be likened to a walking meditation, a conscious effort to carry a sense of peace and awareness throughout our day. A variety of techniques, including different breaths and meditations, cater to the diverse ways our brains work. The goal is to make these practices adaptable to various situations, standing, sitting, walking, or lying down. The intention is to prevent defaulting to old, unproductive habits. Repetition is crucial in forming habits. By consistently practicing a relaxed state, 
akin to the healed and abundant person we aspire to be, we reshape our physiology and gradually make this a natural part of our being. The idea is to hit this from multiple angles, ensuring a holistic approach to mindfulness. While there's a focus on conscious living, the reality is that sometimes we may default to old patterns. Importantly, this isn't a failure. It's a recognition that unconscious moments will happen. The key is in minimizing these instances by continuously practicing and remembering our intention to be creators of our experiences. In essence, life becomes an ongoing experiment where we learn to navigate challenges with a conscious and intentional mindset. It's about choosing not to be victims of circumstances, but creators of our responses. By weaving mindfulness into the fabric of our daily lives, we embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation, one conscious choice at a time. Change happens in those moments when you decide it's time to ride the bicycle, regardless of how many times you've fallen off before. It's a daily ongoing process. Even if you're not seeing immediate results in your life, it's crucial to keep showing up. Reaching a point where you don't really care if things happen or not is a game changer. It's about being happy and grateful for who you are. At this stage, get ready, because your life is about to take a magical turn. The community we're proud of doesn't do the work to please others. They do it because they want to experience the magic in their lives. This journey involves becoming a creator in your life. By changing how you feel and think and witnessing evidence of this change, you start to believe in yourself as the creator of your life rather than a victim. This shift is true empowerment and it's something no one can take away from you. Excuses like being too sick, too old, having a difficult past, or not being in great shape don't hold. Even if you've never meditated before, the process is accessible to everyone. People who come in with no expectations often have the most profound experiences. And data shows that unexpected moments lead to significant breakthroughs. No one is excluded from this transformative process. We've seen incredible transformations in people with brutal pasts, including those who've experienced abuse or trauma. Even Navy SEALs and prisoners with terrible memories have literally transformed within seven days. The key is making time every single day to decide who you want to be in the world. Even if you fall multiple times as you start to change, going back to your old ways becomes increasingly difficult. In summary, change is a continuous process, much like learning to ride a bicycle. It happens when you decide to show up daily, regardless of past falls. When you reach a point of not caring about outcomes, you open the door to a magical life. The community we're, we're proud of is not motivated by pleasing others, but by a desire to experience life's magic. Becoming a creator in your life involves changing how you feel and think, leading to tangible evidence of transformation. This shift from victimhood to creator is true empowerment, immune to you know, external challenges. Excuses like age, health, or past experiences hold no weight. Everyone can embark on this journey. The process is open to all, regardless of meditation experience. Those with no expectations often have profound moments supported by um, data highlighting breakthroughs in unexpected situations. Nobody is excluded from this transformative journey as evidenced by the remarkable changes in people with challenging pasts. Making daily decisions about the person you want to be forms the core of this process. Despite inevitable falls, persisting in this journey makes going back to old ways increasingly challenging. Ultimately, this is a continuous, accessible, and empowering process that anyone can embrace.